A particle of mass m moves in a conservative force field described by the potential energy function u is equal to a multiplied by the quantity of r over b plus b over r where a and b are positive constants and r is the distance uh, from the origin. The graph of u is shown below. Now questions related to this is what we're going to talk about in this episode of Physics is Easy with Mr. Jesse. Now this is an AP Physics Mechanics question on conservative forces and potential energy. Part A. Find the position R at which the potential energy reaches a minimum in terms of A and B. So if we are going to look at this potential energy versus position graph, we could clearly see that the potential energy is minimum at this particular location. Now recall that if we have a, a potential energy versus position graph or if we have the potential energy function or potential energy as a function of position we could actually determine the force by getting the negative of the derivative of the position function with respect to or other potential energy function with respect to position let me say that again we could get the force by getting the derivative of the potential energy function with respect to position the negative of that is actually equal to the force okay and this also means that the negative of the slope of a potential energy versus position graph is equal to the force so again remember that this particular part here is just actually the slope so if we're going to draw a line that is tangent to the curve or to the point at this particular point right here we could just draw a, a straight horizontal line all right that in fact right there is the force at that particular point and that is equal to zero simply because that it is a horizontal line and therefore horizontal line and the slope of a horizontal line is zero so we could just equate f is equal to negative of the derivative of the potential energy function with respect to position to zero then we will be able to get the r that is being asked in part a so let's do that we have the negative of the derivative of the position function so our position function is we have our position function right here that's our position function okay so we have a multiplied by the quantity of r over b plus b over r the derivative of that function with respect to r so I could rewrite this we will have the derivative of a r over b plus a b over r with respect to r is equal to zero and that should be equated to zero as well so simplifying this further or I mean evaluating the differential we will have the negative of so the derivative of the first term with respect to R this is just equal to a over B plus the derivative of the second term with respect to R would give us that would give us a b give us a b over r squared once again that should be equated to zero so distributing um, the negative sign distributing the negative sign to the terms inside our bracket we will have 
yung negative AB minus, or rather plus, sorry, let me just uh, re let me just make a correction. The derivative of this term right here with respect to R should be negative, should be negative, that should be negative AB over R squared. So that is why if we are going to multiply the negative or distribute the negative sign to that term right there, we will have a plus. And that's going to be a plus AB over R squared and that is equal to zero so transposing this to the other side of the equation we're going to have a b over r squared is equal to a b a over b rather such that we will have rewriting this once again let me write it here on top rewriting that we will have a b squared over a is equal to r squared so that we will be able to cancel a then we have b squared is equal to r squared which means that our r is just equal to b so that answers our question so it is actually at b or this means that this distance right here is actually equal to b and that corresponds to the potential energy to be minimum. So now let's proceed to part B. Find the minimum potential energy U sub zero in terms of A and B. So in part A, we were able to solve that the potential energy is minimum at the location r sub zero is equal to b so therefore we just have to substitute b into the original potential energy function in order for us to determine the minimum potential energy so we have u is equal to a this is our potential energy function b over r so substituting r from uh, substituting r in this equation so r is equal to b so we will have a is equal to b over b plus b over b since r is again equal to b that m that means we will have a over 1 plus 1 and that gives us that the potential energy minimum is in fact equal to 2a. The third part of this question is sketch the net force on the particle as a function of r on the graph above. So what you see here is actually the answer already. So this is already the answer. Now let us analyze this and why is it that the answer should look like the way it is presented here. So once again, recall that the force is just equal to the negative of the slope of a potential energy versus position graph. So if we are going to look at this part right here, the slope is actually negative. Right? The slope is negative and the slope is decreasing. So therefore, if force is the negative of the slope, so therefore we should have this part here corresponds to a positive force because the slope is negative and this force is actually decreasing so if we're going to look at that it is actually on this part right here so the force is decreasing until such time that it reaches this point here wherein the slope is zero so that means the force is also zero so that's why here it corresponds to a force of zero and this particular point here uh, beyond the minimum potential energy the slope is increasing all right and that is actually getting um, positive and positive so again if the slope is positive so therefore the force should be negative because again look at this equation the force is the negative the slope of the potential energy versus position graph so if the slope here is positive that means our force here should become negative until such time that it would reach this part right here at 2r 
wherein the force starts to increase or rather the potential energy starts to increase linearly so the slope doesn't change all right the slope doesn't change at that point and therefore we actually have a steady force at that particular location and that concludes this tutorial. Once again, always remember, physics is easy with Mr. Jesse.